Okay, so today we're going to start looking at a new uh, blockchain that has was brought to my attention by a viewer called Avalanche. Avalanche, if you watch their video, is designed for um, uh, financial transactions that uh, that are um, you know all over the uh, blockchain. So. The nice thing, they, they, their concept there is you should be able to move assets around in a distributed fashion very efficiently. Uh, and if you know, if you deal with financial assets, if you deal with buying and selling different things, sometimes it can get complicated, especially if you get beyond stocks, um, options, you know, basic uh, equity type things that you would buy can get from one of the big brokers uh, you know crypto can be a bit complex to buy and sell uh, you know that if you get into if you if you've ever tried to do harder assets like gold and silver uh, that can get a bit complex uh, especially if you're starting to deal with stuff involving wire transactions and things of that nature and um, the banks are not always the most cooperative in that regard. Um, so, anyway, but from a technical level, um, Avalanche is supposed to have advantages over what we've seen before, Bitcoin, Ethereum. Uh, it uses, you can use the same smart contracts on Avalanche as on Ethereum, just like we saw with Theta. Um, they claim to be quite fast. I don't know. I'd have to look up how that compares to Theta. And this is CPU bound. This is, um, focuses more on the CPU than the GPU, which I thought is interesting. Uh, and unlike Bitcoin, it doesn't need some kind of special machine because it doesn't use that, uh, amount of, of uh, processing power because it's proof of stake which is an advantage over Theta. Theta, you know, that's why do you think they're trying to get all these nodes and uh, and so on. It's it's a similar thing to Ethereum in that regard. It's supposed to be more secure and if you're dealing with financial transactions <laughs> you want that. And again, they're showing the advantages here again uh, of Avalanche. And this is what we're going to have to get into because it looks like it could be a little compl complex. It has two different consensus engines. And um, I, they have this concept of virtual machine. Uh, the code that uses consensus to produce a database. So you synchronize these um, data, this data structure across multiple machines. You have a lot of subnets and the main net, you know, the, uh, you have the chain and then you have all these subnets, which we've seen similar things in uh, Polkadot and uh, a set of dynamic validators working consent. Uh, can achieve consensus on the state of a set of blockchains as opposed to one blockchain. And interesting enough, they have three different uh, main chains, the prime, three primary network. Uh, the primary network can, consists of three chains, the platform, so this is more the coordination, uh, the the exchange, the default assets exchange chain, and then a smart contracts chain. And this is what we're going to be getting into. This is the resources. Uh, they have some good information for developers. Let's see if I can bring that up. So they have all this do the documentation, and this is what we're going to be getting into where you can get a node up and running and you can see it's also go similar to what we just saw with Theta. So a lot of these projects are using similar technology and trying to 
imp you know, implemented in a, a faster way or a better way or a more uh, way specific for the problem they're trying to solve. So again, this if you watch their um, video, they do talk about it for financial transaction. Now this is very interesting right here. For Raspberry Pi or ARM64, we didn't, I don't think we've seen this before. Hmm, this is might be something to try. Very interesting. Put it on a Raspberry Pi 4. Clearly, that is something worth looking at. Um, they're cheap enough. I I may have a free one, or I may just get one. And I'm wondering, I need to check if the Jetson Nano uses any of the ARM processors. I want to see what, uh, and I don't know, I have another little board here that may use ARM. This is interesting. Anyway, so it, this will go through, and, and we'll be going through this um, to see if we can get this puppy up and running. But anyway, uh, this is a very interesting project, and if they succeed, particularly in the financial realm, that can further the goal and I, to separate people be able to separate themselves from the traditional banking system, which, if you watch the news and you see what these banks, these. Uh, you know, banks are doing with the Fed and with the similar banks in, you know, other countries. It's scary. It really is. Uh, so, this might give you one more independence from that. Now, whether that's going to be, when we'll be able to get away with that legally, that's another matter entirely. But we're going to focus here on the technology and see if we can get this going and see. Uh, I would like to, you know, get a bit more familiar with the technology. Uh, I'm curious how it compares speed-wise to Theta. Uh, both of them are doing things that, you know, where they're focusing on high speed. So, anyway, if you found this useful, then please, uh, like, please subscribe and ring the bell if you want to see as we continue work on this on this network now. And um, again, this uses similar tools. So the great thing is there's one type of skill set that can be applied to various projects. And um, you know, you got your Go, you got your Solidity, you got your um, Remix. And uh, those are going to be key technologies. And interacting, if you can write JavaScript, they pretty much all have a library to do that. So anyway, I will speak to you all tomorrow. And uh, take care.